verse 6. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. The Bible reads, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood the Lamb as it, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Let us pray. Babylon Shalai Kaizuluni says, Ilifunzile Livlako, Nalamusha wa Ketingilos, Uketomun Dwenyam, Kutseta to Kaza Livilako, Nia Tandazan Kulungulgus Gona Guam, Pambuga Gamugne Mendelinium Sebenduako, Nifisem in a Mangabenak, Asgabutsa Niganja Naktova, Mundwa Kulumaga Pastela Nastova Mazula Kumisananat, Tata in the way I could get Jehovah Kumenat in Anamusha and Leketagil, Parama Jehovah Bonaral, Kulumas Marat of Varal. Amen. In the book of Revelation chapter 4, the focus is on the throne. And in Revelation chapter 5, the focus is on the scroll that's in the right hand of the one who sits on the throne. In Revelation chapter 5, the Bible says, there is a scroll in the right hand of the one who sits on the scroll. And a strong angel shouts and asks, who is worthy? To open the scroll and break the seals thereof. John looks and there's no one stepping up. To open the scroll and break the seals. John says I wept. Because no one was stepping up. As John is weeping. An elder comes. And he says John weep not. But look again. For the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David. He's worthy to open the scroll. And break the seals thereof. John says I turned to look. And when I turned to look, behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts was the lamb standing there. The lamb had seven horns, had seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. If you had said a powerful amen, we were done. But you did not. I have to push it one more time. There is a scroll which is sealed with seven seals. Now, you know the number seven in the Bible. It refers to completion. Which means the scroll is sealed completely. Which means the scroll cannot be opened by just anyone. The scroll can only be opened by someone that's worthy. And worthiness in John's day denoted to a distinctive qualification of someone that would occupy a highly honored office. And that qualification was based on, on, on outstanding achievement. So when the elder comes to John and says the lion of the tribe of Judah is worthy. He is saying, John, we have someone that's worthy to open the scroll. And this someone who's worthy to open the scroll comes from the tribe of Judah. This someone that comes that is worthy to open the, the scroll comes from the lineage of David. He has prophesied concerning the Messiah. That's what makes him worthy to open the scroll. Now the, 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 the lion refers to, to what Jesus did. He overcame. He's worthy to open the scroll. You, you're still not getting it. So when John turns to look, he sees a lamb. Now the lamb, it refers to how he did it. Still did not give me that amen. I want to close, Bazalwan. The lion, it's what he did. The lamb, it's how he did it. You see, when I look at my life, I can tell you the things that God has done. I can name them. The what I have. But how? I have no idea. Ah, that's why I love this song. Sangen ala apok ti wakon. Agungen. But sangen, how? I don't know. Sapum, how? I don't know. Some of us are here today. People complete, concluded that our life was finished. But we made it back. How? I don't know. Oh, some of us are here. We're down and out. People made, made a laughing stock out of us. Oh, but we are here. We made it. Ah, You know how? I don't know. But we made it out alive. So now, and then, then, then John says that's, that's what makes him worthy. And you know that the, the lamp, it, it represents what Jesus did on the cross. He, 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 he did this mission by offering himself as a sacrificial lamp. That's how he overcame. So he is worthy. You see, the story of the cross makes him worthy to open the scroll and go through the contents of the scroll. So he is worthy 
to open the scroll. You see, the story of the cross makes Jesus very unique. Ah, I, I remember one time people were coming home to see my father. They had never been to our home. We stay in the village. They had never been there. They were coming to see my father. So my father gives them the, the directions to our home. And they, they were struggling with the directions. They couldn't find their way home. And then my father calls them. He says, but tell me, where are you? They tell them, they tell him where they are. And then my father says to them, you, 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 you stay where you are. I will send my son to come and get you where you are. And then my father turns to me. He says, Skumbuzo, get up from me. Make your way to where they are. When you get to where they are, I want you to lead them home, son. I made my way to where they were. When I got to where they were, I said it to them. If you want to make it home and see my father, follow the son. For the son knows the way to the father. Ah, uh, Bazalwan, I noticed something. When I made a turn, they also turned. You know why? The son knows the way to the father. When I slowed down, they also slowed down. You know why? Because the son knows the way to the father when i arrived at home they also arrived you know why the son they were faithful in following the son ah Barcelona, after the fall of men in the garden of eden the bible says the bible says we were given directions home the ten commandments ah but we were struggling with that thing ah the bible does not end there the bible says and then god so loved the world that is sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's why Jesus comes to Martha in John 11. He says to Martha, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who die believing in me, even though they die, they will live again. Jesus, when he speaks concerning himself, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you want to make it to the Father, no one can come to the Father, but except through the Son. The Son knows the way to the Father. The story of the cross makes him very unique. That is why the Bible says unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the Father, the Son. It's only the Son that can lead us to the Father. That's what makes him worthy to take the scroll and go through the contents of the scroll. He overcame by laying down his life. Ah, Barcelona. When John, now, now when you read the story, John looks twice. When he looks the first time, he does not see the lamp. Ah, oh, you did not get it. I have a problem here. Who was the lamp? Because John weeps because he could not locate the lamp. Who was the lamp? I understand maybe the reason you're quiet is because you have never asked this question. I asked it in 2020. Remember when COVID hit us. I thought heaven was going to take care of that thing just like that. But months passed. I started asking myself, where is the lamp? When I received the news that we have lost the sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, I asked this question, where is the lamp? When, when I buried church members, I buried them asking this question, where is the lamp? You see, when you visit, if you visit hospitals today, they're asking this question, but where is the lamp? You go to some homes, they're asking this question, where is the powerful one? Where is the lamp? Now in verse 6, the Bible says, when John looked, the lamp was standing there. Now when you read it in the original, it says the lamp had been standing there. So the lamp did not start standing when John looked the second time. Even when he looked the first time, the lamp was present. The lamp had been standing there. So you're wondering where the lamp was in 2020. The lamp was present. Mazalwane, when you ask yourself, where is the lamp? I want to let you know today that the lamp is present when the funds are low and the depths are high. When K is pressing you down a bit and you feel like the lamp has forsaken you. The lamp will never leave you nor forsake you. That's why David says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for the lamp is present. There is never a day the lamp is absent. He's always present. Even on days, it feels like he's not there. He's very present. The lamb had been standing there. He was there all the time. John missed the lamb. And sometimes we miss him when he's right next to us. The lamb had been standing there. Now the lamb is standing there. When John sees the lamb, 
which means there is hope for humanity. Because humanity have someone on the inside. Uh, you missed it. I want to close, Bazalwa. I want to close. Last year, I was invited for camp meeting in Kenya. Few days, few days before I could travel, I discovered that my passport had expired. I, I, I thought of canceling the trip. I then called my sister, and then my sister reminds me that one of our church members works at the Home Affairs offices. I contacted this church member. Hallelujah. <laughs> And I explained my situation to her. I said, I need to travel and to go and do the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. But my passport has expired. And, and this process takes weeks. I needed to travel in just a few days. And she says, Pastor, tomorrow make your way to the Home Affairs offices. The following day, I made my way to the Home Affairs offices. Some of my documents were missing. But Bazalwane, don't worry. I had someone on the inside. Well, when I got to the home affairs offices, Bazalwa, there was a long queue there. But guess what? I did not stand in the queue. You know why? Because I had someone on the inside. I dropped my documents on her desk and I said to her, I need to travel in just a few days. He says, Pastor, don't worry. I'll push this thing for you from the inside. Oh, later that day, I received a phone call from her. She says, Pastor. Your passport is red. You know why? Because I had someone on the inside. So when John looks and sees the lamp, it means there's hope for humanity. Because humanity has someone on the inside. Before I sit down, Mazalon. Let me let you know today um, that we have a high priest um, who does not need to make offerings like the priest of old because we have a clean priest on the inside. When John writes, he says, my little children, I am writing to you these things that you may not sin. But if you do sin, huh, don't worry. You have an advocate on the inside. There is hope for the worst sinner. There is hope for prostitutes. There is hope for drug dealers. There is hope for humanizers. Because we have a man. On the inside. Ah, you, see, you see Satan who is the accuser of the brethren. When he accuses you in the heavenly courts. With all the evidence. Your advocate who is Jesus Christ. He stands up. And he says father. I object. And your father who happens to be the judge. When he hears that from the son, he will say, objection sustained. Because we have a man on the inside. See, I, I don't know where you are coming from. I don't know which bed you got up from. But my brother, my sister, you might be a mess. But there's hope even for you. Because we have a man on the inside. Our sins can be forgiven even today. Because we've got someone on the inside. Ah, let me close it now. The, the, the lamp, I'm sitting down after this. Hallelujah. If I don't sit down after this, you can leave. Hallelujah. <laughs> now the Bible says, verse 6. Verse 6 speaks to the three attributes of God. The, the lamp had seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. Speaks to his omnipotence. Speaks to his omniscience. Speaks to his omnipresence. But this, today, this afternoon, I just want to share with you about his omnipotence. The all-powerful God. Then I sit down. All-powerful God who can do it all. Nothing impossible with this God. Omnipotent God. God Almighty. He walks on water when he feels like. He commands the waters and the, and the winds and the waves to be still and they obey his voice. He, he changes water into wine. He does things his way. He does what he feels like. But, but this powerful God, in as much as he is all powerful, you see, God will do all that he will. But God will not do all that he can. Ah, you did not get it, Bazalwan. God will do all that he will. But God will not do all that he can. So when God does not do it, it does not mean he does not have the ability to do it. He has simply chosen not to do it. See, God can give you that dream job you've been fasting and praying for. Just like that. But he can still choose not to give you. And when he chooses not to, 
It's not because he has failed. He has simply chosen. Ah, the three boys will help you understand this. They say to Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, this fire, yeah. the one we serve, yeah. can, yeah. is able, yeah. but even if he doesn't. So the boys are saying to Nebuchadnezzar, he can, he has the ability, but he can still choose not to. Yeah. And when he chooses not to, don't think he does not have the ability. He's still in control. He's still capable. See, see, when, when you, some of us prayed for our loved ones. When they were sick, we prayed, we fasted. Called the prayer band to pray with us. But they still died. Not because he failed. He chose not to heal. And when God chooses not to do certain things, we are left frustrated. But the singer says, in the by and by, we will talk it over. I will ask the questions and he will tell me why. So when we get to heaven, I'm sitting Jesus down. The first thing I'm asking him, 2020, what happened? I had hope in you. I preached that you would take care of that. But Lord, months passed and you did nothing. And he will have to explain himself to me. And when he does that, on that day, Mazalona will throw my feet, myself at the feet of Jesus. And he says, yeah, you, you are worthy to sit on the throne but right now it does not make sense but on that day it will make sense my prayer today Bazalon, is that we may trust the lamp even when the lamp does not do the things we ask him to do may we trust him that the lamp in the end in the by and by we will talk it let me close with the story it's a true story by the way a two team, there's a team I support here in South Africa. If you do not say amen after this, then you have a problem. The, the elders must make a, make, make a plan for you to join the baptismal class. And the name of the team is Orlando Pirates. Some of, you, some of you did not say amen. That means you are lost. You need the Lord. Orlando Pirates, a young man supported this team. Loved this team with, his, with all his heart. One Saturday afternoon, K Orlando Pirates was playing the other team, Kaiser Chiefs. Very useless team. <laughs> they were playing one Saturday afternoon. But now this young man, he's an Adventist. On Sabbath, he must be at church. So he asked his friends to record the game. He says, I'm going to church after church. I'll, I'll watch the game. He goes to church. In the morning, he's at church. Afternoon, he's still at church. And then he goes home. His friends had recorded the game. And the game had ended 3-0 in favor of Orlando Pirates. Yeah, I still did not get to that amen. Orlando Pirates had won the game 3-0. But the young man still sat on his couch to watch the game. Kaiser Chiefs was playing so well. It looked like they were going to score at any time. Out of frustration, this young man shouts. He says, tackle him clear the ball. The friends come over to him and say, brother, relax. The score is 3-0. <laughs> ah, Bazalone, Kaiser Chiefs were attacking left, right, and center. This young man was shouting at the Orlando Pirates players. The friends would come over to remind him, don't worry, brother. The score is 3-0. Ah, before I sit down, Bazalone, see the score of this game is 3-0. Yeah. I ah, wish I was at this church. They'll be up on the African Eve, Valendo. The score is 3-0. The first goal was scored in heaven. Remember in heaven, the evil one. Say, I think I can do this. The Bible says he was removed from heaven. That was the first goal. You're asking me about the, the second goal. You see, the second goal was scored at the cross. You see, the, th the devil thought he had equalized on Friday. But it was just an offside goal. Because the Bible says early on Sunday morning, the stone was rolled away. The women are standing at the tomb of Jesus Christ. A man appears and says to the ladies, Ladies, what are you doing in this place? Why search for the living amongst the dead? He is risen. He is not here. That was the second goal. Ask me about the third goal. You see, we walk by faith and not by sight. The third goal will be scored when the Son of Man returns. You see, it may look like the devil has got the upper hand. It may seem like the devil is running things. But my brother, relax. The score. is
Amen. We had the pegiswayo ubugate ubugate utagash. That's why I'm So this is October 2026. Like. Okay, now so you could record us here. Namshanko si yamangala umangi pega embuva ube wena wange na mi kabeza fedele namshan. We have no idea. But Sangen, Kulunkulu Hamba now, Jehovah, we are Mangalis. Gushek Hamba Nasmagat, Mutanda Zom, Wami Manj, Kutin Kulunkul Besna Hamba now, Tikatitong, Malanga Ong, near Tanda Zango, Sibando Nabakula Bakonalan, Tanda Zankulunkul was Besna Tesakshi, Nomagnaba Matimagan and Piluin, Besna Salis Bambele. Sibambelele kuse kubengi lilo la La po yotra muka nge mafedi zulu Bese siya memeta Siti na ingo siyetu besolo si ilinzele Bese uyashowe nge mavakot Well done Good and faithful servant <laughs> 